Hey chums, welcome back to a Game of Chums podcast. I am your host for this episode. And once again, joining me as always is my ever faithful uh, uh, drinking buddy. Person I just sort of, just person I'm if I if I'm ever bored and want to go for a drink, I'll just give you a ring. Yeah. To be fair, we do we don't ever do anything do. that doesn't involve drink. <laughs> I, I yeah to be honest like it's a I, I was joking there but i think about it i was like everything we do involves having a drink at some point even if it's not dr- drinking related it's just like we just go to the pub um but that's not a bad thing you know like, like japan matsuri last weekend where we just we looked at it and went that's busy let's go to the pub yeah yeah we went to the japan matsuri in london and Tra- trafalgar square specifically um it was really busy when we got there we got there around about half one or two was it two o'clock it's about half it was, one i think yeah about yeah. that time um yeah and it was extremely busy they weren't letting people in so we thought bollocks to queue in let's just go to the pub we found we went to we didn't find it but we went to a, a really famous uh pub in in uh, that area called waxy o'connor um so obviously irish theme pub but it's uh, got a tree in the pub yeah, i don't know if it's almost like it, a tavern out of a fantasy game or something mm-hmm. yeah it's nice a bit overpriced but it's london for you isn't it really everywhere's expensive to go and get have a pint you know the day when it comes to getting like 10 pound for a, a pint it's the day i probably stop going to the pub because that's just um a bit stupid <laughs> but yeah but yeah, we Matsuri. What what did you think of it, Ross? I know we did a video on it, and um, but we didn't really give our opinion on it because um, it was a short video. There wasn't too much to do. There was a lot on stage, but it was it wasn't like sort of like an interactive sort of experience. It's more like you go there, yeah. watch something on stage, buy some overpriced food, and then sort of bugger off. Yeah, that's the thing. If you weren't just standing there watching everything on the stage there wasn't really anything to do i mean obviously mm. there were like um stands there and stuff but it was like some of it was like promoting japanese tourism and stuff and um had like a jr rail oh. pass stand there for some reason i'm not quite sure why mm. but yeah the, the majority of it was food stands and they looked like they were selling very small portions for very large amounts of money mm-hmm. uh, so we ended up just going to a very nice vietnamese restaurant instead yeah but yeah i mean nice. if you're going to stand there and watch all the stage show stuff i'm sure there would there would, would have been plenty of stuff to watch there was like um some martial arts stuff going on there was um well aikido of, aikido, well, aikido. i think there was probably other stuff as well because they usually have more than one on um throughout the day but there was stuff i think it was what was it 10 till 8 the whole day oh it was a long and, event um, yeah uh-huh. yeah so there was a lot on the stage and there was like some a, like a choir doing um anime songs and stuff which is pretty cool got a few clips of that hopefully we don't get a uh, strike but um oh, yeah there's uh, a lot have, going on the stage but we have got if a, you weren't a, we have got a copyright claim is way. it the uh attack on titan song um i'm not too sure which one it is but we if you look on if you look on our our, our um creator page it is we've been hit with a copyright uh, it's, it's, yeah. like it's not even the music from the anime or the game it's it's a choir singing it mm. so it's like i don't know it's ridiculous anyway but yeah, yeah there was if you were just going to stand in the in the cold and the rain and watch the stage show then you would have had found it plenty to entertain yourself but if you wanted to kind of look around it wasn't really a great deal going on but you know it was, it's something gets you out of the house gets you up it's to central f- london and it, it's free as well so yeah, it's free yeah you just walk in mm. when you can yeah. when you can which we which we couldn't at first no no, yeah, it was all right. It kind of just reminds me of Hyper Japan, you know. Except you don't pay for the privilege of getting into the door, to the mm. building, and watching it. It was just what Hyper Japan's kind of kind of shit now. Unfortunately, it's gone really downhill. Um, I don't think we really enjoyed the last time we were Hyper Japan last year, and we. That's why we didn't go this year. Um, everything's behind a paywall. And if you're looking to do all the activities in one day, you're looking to spend a pretty penny. I think we calculated it, didn't we? It was like we 600 or 
six hundred quid or something crazy like some that. some ridiculous. Yeah, it's just it's just not good. And you know, if you're not if you're not willing to pay for the the activities, then you know it's not a Basically lot. You're not can seeing pay. anything. Yeah, and um, the food sellers there are few and far between. They seem to be getting less and less each year. Um, obviously, no, no for for us raging alkies, there was nowhere selling beer. Which mm. for Japan, which has a rich his, rich history or rich culture of 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 of, of beers, um, it's of surprising beers, of that sake that, of whiskey. Yeah, there was nothing like that. I mean, they had the sake experience, but obviously, you had to pay. Um, but I remember we went to one, it was in the old tobacco dock. And I remember that we, we got thoroughly plastered cause they, they, they were, they had like beers and stuff. And they also had like whiskey, that Japanese whiskey. Remember it was really hot. Mm. They, I remember we yeah. got some that and might have been eyeballs the, and stuff as well. Yeah. I think that might've been the Christmas market version. They don't do that anymore, which is a shame. Mm. I think they should bring that back. But I, I do remember that we, we did s- sample, <laughs> a lot of what Japan has to offer in terms of their alcohol, because they do have a good extensive range, even though they went to other countries, learned how to do it and came back and sort of done it themselves. Do you know what I mean? That's what, Japan, God bless them. That's what they did. They sent their best and brightest to learn how, like how to brew alcohol from various countries, came back and thought, let's make our own and started that and started like replicating. And now the they have bottles of Japanese whiskey that are a thousand pounds. Yep, there you go, there you go. But we're, we're not here to shit on Hyper Japan. Um, yeah, we've done know, that may, enough. We, we might go back next year if they do it. We'll see what they're doing, um, if they've improved. Um, yeah, but that, that's gone shockingly downhill, which is a shame because I like to go to these events. I like like uh, some stuff that interests us in terms of like gaming, Japan, Japanese culture. Um, it's a good day out. It used to be anyway and but now it's sort of like you go there and just like what's the point because it's just literally nothing to do unless you pay yeah. extra to do things yeah so um and they're not cheap yeah if it was like oh yeah there's this mm. workshop on it's five quid and you'd be like yeah, yeah fine do that but it's like mm. this here's this workshop and it's 22 quid yeah but anyway yeah, it... we're not we're not here to shit on the con so we'll, we'll leave it <laughs> yeah um we're disgruntled but... that's all we're, we're we're a disgruntled bunch um yeah but talking of which being disgruntled we 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 got a topic in mind we, and we're gonna actually before that anything happening in the world of gaming any news metaphor refantasio came out mm. and it reviewed very very well and it's doing really well in sales mm-hmm. and stuff and there was yeah a 10 hour demo that they put up like a week or two ago and you can carry your progress over and mm-hmm. um yeah so if you want to just check the game out go and try that it is very good yeah all right yeah. all right all right, all right. Um, plug for a game there sponsor us atlas give us money please and stuff. yeah if there's any sponsors out there send us a sponsorship what would be really good sponsor is because we talk like our whole channel is like we play games and drink beer if we get a beer sponsor preferably <laughs> something from like asia like asahi or something like that Please sponsor us. I don't know if they actually do sponsor any content mm. creators. I don't really see money like alcohol companies sponsor co- content creators. It's normally like something more healthy, like <laughs> you know. But fuck it, just, or some just... bullshit like G Fuel. Oh yeah, I was going to say that, but I was going to mention that in the same breath as healthy. But I was like, that's not healthy. That's just a load of sugar and like um, preservatives and crap in there. <laughs> But um oh yeah, but if you want to sponsor us, G Fuel, fuck, <laughs> please, yeah, bring it on, man. Um, but we're not proud. We're not proud. Uh, we 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 don't have many morals. We'll sell out. <laughs> no scruples. <laughs> no scruples. Um, speaking of which, the Xbox Series X, PlayStation Five, they've been out for a while now. So we feel like we want to just talk about this generation how is it compared to last generation the improvements the sort of um the the, the sort of um games that that, that each company I, I would include nintendo but they're still on the same bloody switch mm-hmm. um but um yeah let, let, let's just talk about that let's just say because if we go back 
Xbox One had a disastrous launch, and it sort of never really recovered from that launch day and the reveal. Um, we talk like people were saying that Xbox has no games; they need to re- they need to um, open more studios, produce more games, which they they have done. Obviously, they bought a load of publishers mm-hmm. and they released a lot of games, so that's an improvement from last from last gen. But again, people have criticized the quality of the games. You know, Starfield was a seriously hyped game from Bethesda. And the amount of um, hate that it's received, even with its new DLC, which a lot of people who like the game really enjoy, but obviously the people who don't like the game obviously didn't like it and had nothing really positive to say about it. Um, It didn't review very well either. No, I didn't. No, that's what I was going to say. It didn't review too well. But can you take those reviews? Because I know some reviewers who dislike the game reviewed the DLC. So they're obviously probably going to give it that bias is going to be there. So even if it was like better, I didn't, didn't someone from, was it IGN or maybe Eurogame game reviewed the base game. He didn't like it. Then they review, he reviewed the DLC obviously didn't like it. So he's maybe has a sort of, so I think that's fair enough because mm. if if you're putting out a DLC, you kind of want someone that's played the game already, yeah. to kind mm-hmm. of to be able to kind of relate what's new in the DLC and stuff like that. I haven't played it um, yet. I think I think I get it because I bought the collector's edition with the smartwatch and everything, um, but I'm just in the middle of other stuff at the moment, so I'll play it eventually. Yeah, um, I haven't really read the reviews. I looked at like the Metacritic and just saw like some of the blurb from the reviews, and it sounds like it's just kind of like here's another planet with just more of the same kind of stuff. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, if people didn't like the base game, they're not going to enjoy that a, a mm-hmm. bit more of it, really. So, but I think it's yeah. probably a good idea for people that reviewed the base game to review the DLC as well to try and kind of try mm-hmm. and relate it to it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah that's, I mean, there that's is a, that's a, a, fa- a, that's a fair point. Game. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I can I can see that point. Like so that's fair enough if you played the game, and then obviously they want someone who's played it um, to review the DLC. But yeah, we're not just going to focus on Starfield. Obviously, like the 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 two company, like PlayStation Four had a it just it just smashed it. It was it was it was great. We owned we own PlayStation Fours. We don't own PS Fives. We'll get onto that in a bit. But yeah, like, like PlayStation were just churning out hits after hits and um you know they ruled the last gen and caught they sort of just mopped the floor of xbox xbox had the the, the xbox one had a strong lineup of first party games when it was got initially released it. yeah and and then it just sort of fell away like i don't think they were putting much effort into the to the brand obviously when old phil came along he sort of gave it a kick <clears> up <throat> the ass but there was a lot of developers who didn't want to make games like third party games for the xbox um so it's just sort of like he died a slow painful it was like a like an old dog they just took it around the back and just quietly sh- put it out its misery well but yeah honest, the... i think the one x kind of revitalized well the one s and the one x kind of revitalized it a bit mm. and the estimates are by the end of the gen they got to like 60 million sales which is pretty bloody good considering how bad it started off and how everyone thinks of that gen as a complete disaster obviously mm. that means they dropped 20 million sales from the previous gen but i don't think anyone would have thought that the xbox one would would hit 60 million sales by the end of the gen mm-hmm. um so it seems to have been a sort of modest success but obviously what actually happens in reality and what the the mind share and the narrative online is are usually wildly different everyone talks about the system like it was some like we level we you level of disaster whereas it was actually fairly successful it just wasn't mm-hmm. as much of a success as a 360. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you can't discount the, what people are saying about it online because that does count as well. Like, it was, you know, it, it Sony did mop the floor with them. It sold twice as many consoles, signed up loads of multi uh, money hats to try and knock them out of the business for good. And, um, you know, with that came a whole new generation of console warriors, which is why there's so much narrative about it online. But, but yeah, yeah but I mean, that 
that's always going to happen though isn't it like there's always going to be console warriors yeah i mean there were tons of 360 console warriors when the during mm-hmm. that gen so i mean it's just people generally will gravitate to what is the the popular console and then just act like idiots about it yep yeah. yeah i think playstation are kind of rest rested on their laurels a bit this gen well they, and particularly this year hasn't been really strong for their first party um i wanted to talk about that because i've noticed that i don't know if this i think this is sort of like a running joke that playstation seem to remaster and remake games under that are not even that old and are available on like a, a back compat to play on the on the ps5 but they keep remaking i mean they recently had a remaster was it a remake of until dawn and apparently that didn't sell very well it did the numbers were really low and they're talking I mean, they about put it out of full price yeah um it, it, it's apparently it's a bigger flop than their up their other their their other flop, which was Concord. Uh, the player uh, uh, numbers were lower than that, which is a big surprise. And it just goes to show, like PlayStation have good, good games, and obviously they've made a lot of deals with third parties to keep certain games off Xbox. Um, you know, Final Fantasy being one. Um, Stella Blade, which came out this Stella year. Stella Blade, well. yeah, Stella Blade. With, um, um, apparently there's some kind of deal in place there yeah yeah apparently they were talk people were saying oh it's because of the xbox one s holding it back in terms of its power that they, they find developers find it hard to make games run good on that console because it's less powerful than the x the uh, series x um but now we're hearing no <laughs> play sony have put, uh, made a deal to keep that off the the xbox for a a year so something similar to what they're doing with silent hill remake which you know it will be is coming out on xbox but not for another year which is um really annoying um it is mm, it's like um playstation's xbox's strategy this year is just to go big and buy publishers and (laughs) then um playstation's idea is to sort of money how well-known titles to keep it off the we'll keep it like a timed exclusive for a year or so or like with with remake final fantasy remake for for i don't know until the end of the trilogy i suppose that's right until I think the it's end gonna, of time maybe yeah who knows i mean i think the final fantasy 16 is coming out for xbox um insiders have said it is definitely coming but they've given mm, no like time frame on it yeah i mean that's they, that's long since been past it's exclusivity mm-hmm. window and it still hasn't even been announced so but then mm-hmm. they did the same thing with the pc as we talked about before that was like eight eight months or something later than they mm-hmm. could have put it on there before they even announced mm-hmm. it so yeah I mean, it's just square enix just being square enix well yeah like that's just them but <clears throat> uh, like i was saying before like playstation strategy is just to remaster their games and resell it repackage it and pretty much sell it for not full price with all of their titles but like a hefty chunk of money for the same the thing game. I don't thing I don't get with Until Dawn. Obviously, that's playable on PS5 because it's a PS4 game, and I think it uses like um, I think it can use like PS5 to run at like higher frame rates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've remade it in a new engine. Like it was on Decima before, which is um, Gorilla's engine that they used for the Horizon games, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Kojima used for Death Stranding. It was on that, and then they've ported it to un- well, they've remade it in Unreal Engine, but they've changed it to like third person camera controls. So it just like it plays like any other third person game, whereas the original had like kind of cinematic fixed camera um, yeah. views. Yeah. Like yeah. followed the character around the scene. Kind we, of did, we, we did a full let's play of that. We did. We enjoyed the game. It's a good game. It was a good game. Yeah. But, but, yeah, like the the way they framed the camera in that was to make it kind of seem more filmic because it's kind of like a an interactive teen slasher fl- uh, flick. And now mm-hmm. they've like stripped that all out and just made it like third person camera controls, which I just, that seems to like kind of miss the point of what the game is to me. It seems like a really mm-hmm. weird remake. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's releasing that when you can still play the original on PS5 and then like making weird changes to it. And then putting it out for full price, um, like you can argue that it's a new game to, for the PC audience, 
And to be honest, I thought it was a straight remake. So I was like, oh, I'm going to buy it when it's like 20 quid on PC and replay it. But now I'm not going to buy it. Mm-hmm. It's just such, it's such a weird remake. And then obviously, mm-hmm. like, Horizon Zero Dawn's getting a remaster. Yep. It still looks um, pretty good. I worked on that. On the remaster. Yeah, I mm-hmm. worked on it. Um, not on, actually on the game, but on the um, packaging and all stuff. that. Yeah, I well worked on that. So I had to keep that stem at the time. Um, confidentiality could get in trouble, especially me having a YouTube channel and stuff. If, that, mm. if I mention that, I'll be like, oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to jail. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, the, it seems like the PS5 is the, they still got some good games, but they don't have as strong a, a lineup as last gen. Um, yeah, they just seem remastering, remaking their previous games so it's just the ps5 remaster era to be honest with you um yeah, i new think I- they sorry go on no i was just thinking have they got any new new ips apart from astrobot i mean astrobot well, is not astrobot's not even a new yeah, IP. yes it's... i was just about to say yeah because it was on i think they had astro's playroom was like pre-installed on ps4s at launch wasn't it or was yeah, it on ps5 right. i can't remember now but think, they yeah. either way they had the uh, vr game on on PS4, mm-hmm. which was really good. To be fair, I played that. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. it. But yeah, not a new IP. Uh, new IPs this gen, Returnal. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That was like a that came out. Was it like a year after the launch of the PlayStation? I think so, yeah, it was yeah. about, It was sort of launch window, as they like to call it. I think so. Probably somewhere within the first year. I think. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if they've had anything else. Like they've or they've. Seems to be all they've focused on doing is just like giving their PS4 games a lick of paint on PS5. Mm-hmm. So you've had like the, the Last of Us One remaster, which is, to be fair, halfway to a remake. You had the Last and of Us Two remaster, two yeah. Master, yeah. Game you had Ghost of Tsushima getting a PS5 update. You had, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure Horizon Zero Dawn got a PS5 update as well, and now it's getting yeah. a remaster, and it's just like make something new. But I don't know. I think mm-hmm. they've. I think they've bet. They bet big under Jim Ryan on like games as a service because they were they, apparently they were they had like twelve um, in development at one point. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Concord was one of those, uh, and that crashed and burned and probably made them rethink stuff. But you can't just immediately like repurpose dev teams to do something else when they're like probably years deep in a games as a service online thing. Mm-hmm. So I think they've been. I think they're just buying time by just like quick remaster everything, just get mm-hmm. something out there for people to give us money for while we mm-hmm. figure out what the hell we're going to do. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm I'm racking my brains trying to think of something. Well, another Lucky. thing I would say as well, it feels mm-hmm. like um, like Horizon and the God of War sort of soft reboot on PS4 were, were huge. Both of them were really big, and it feels like. I don't know if this is just me looking in from the outside in because I don't have a PS5, but it seems like the sequels just kind of came and went and didn't really do what people were probably uh, expecting them to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it wasn't Horizon. Didn't that come out before Baldur's Gate 3? So I think Baldur's Gate 3 sort of stole its thunder. I think it came out around Rusty, the same time. Same as, time. I think it was around the same time as... Tears of the Kingdom, maybe because I remember the first Horizon came out around the same time as Breath of the Wild. It was oh, like a week before or something, and people were going yeah. nuts about Horizon. Then a week later, everyone was just like Breath of the Wild. And I, yeah. I, I feel like the same thing happened with the sequel, maybe. But mm. I don't know. This year has been has just gone disappeared on me. Did it even mm. come out this year? or Was it last year? I honestly can't remember. Uh, last year, I think. Pretty sure it was two thousand and three. Mm. I'm but yeah, cross. I remember there being a lot why, of negativity why don't you, around it. Why don't it you fact check that? Why don't you well. fact check that for fact oh, check that out. for us? I'm looking yeah. it up right now. We need someone. But we yeah, need I'm, a produ- We need a producer so we can go. We, can fact good, check us. we can't yeah. afford to pay them. <laughs> we can. We can hire Holy just one of our was, mates. <laughs> it, it was February 2022. <laughs> oh fuck! It's like nearly three years ago. Jesus. Gee, time flies, man. Time flies. And speaking yeah. of time, time flying. Like, how long are we into this generation? Is it f- coming up five, on four years? Four years now. 
Yeah, and, it was um, like November 2020, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, has we PlayStation... still deep in the clutches of COVID. Of, uh, and COVID. Has a PlayStation 5, the PS5 has had a, it's getting a, an upgrade, isn't it? The Pro. Yeah. But it's just digital. You have to buy it. If you want a hard drive, um, disk drive, you have to buy that separately for mm-hmm. like 700 quid. Did we talk about that? I think we, I'm sure we, we have. We, I think we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, ha- if you ha- want, if you want to stand it upright and you want a disc drive, it's like eight hundred quid. It's a lot of money. That's a lot crazy. for a slight, slightly crazy. more powerful. I see. Um, I don't know. Like Xbox doesn't seem to be doing a a pro version this gen. Um, a bit, there's been well, they, rumor. Carry on. Yeah, they said at the beginning of this gen, like before they launched, that um, um. Like previously, it would be like they create like an SOC, and then you'd be able to shrink that down as a generation goes on. Then obviously, fit more of those processes on a wafer and get more higher yields out of a single wafer. So that was why costs would go down because you'd be able to shrink the process node and then get mm. more for your money essentially, which is why console prices tend to drop. And mm. then obviously, uh, four years in, like they both did. Well, Sony did it three years in last gen, and then Microsoft did it four years in. Then you can make like a more powerful version of that hardware and sell it for basically the same price. Microsoft said that's like not happening anymore. No drinks aren't saving anyone any money. They're becoming along too slowly. And um, they anticipated like the price, the bill, the build cost of a Series X wouldn't really be any different sort of four years down the line than it is at launch. So that's mm-hmm. why they went with the two SKU approach off the bat so they could have sort of a, affordable option and a premium option and yeah i think the pro is kind of bearing that out giving it 700 quid for like a bare bones version of it yeah it's crazy this is what are the next gen consoles gonna cost better start saving now i'm saving now mate i've got a savings um um account i'm saving money in that not specifically for the new xbox but for (laughs) For life just to live just to live in this goddamn um capitalist well, hellscape yeah 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 um but like do you like obviously like we said playstation had some a really strong lineup last gen um through probably like you know obviously the launch of the xbox and the decline of the xbox one didn't it help them help them it, that was the go-to console to go to have it was a ps4 uh, but um how do you, how do you feel Xbox has done this gen? Because they seem to address some of the issues that they had last gen about having no games, no exclusive games. So they went out and they've got a massive portfolio of, of, of studios now making various um various types of games. Um like Halo's getting is going is jumping onto a new engine, the Unreal Engine 5. So yeah, that's something. To, people think that's a sign that play, um, Halo is going to go multi-plat um, just because they're using like a sort of a multi-plat engine. Yeah, but I mean, Gears, yeah. Gears is on that engine, so yeah, it's, yeah, doesn't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, also, how, how do you, I mean, who the hell knows what they're going to do at this point? Fuck, fuck knows, mate. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, they, I was going to say new IP for PlayStation, but no, it's not. It's a sequel, Hell Divers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just like, oh, he's Hell Divers too. Yeah, yeah. You should true. probably say Death Stranding because they, I think they yeah. do own that IP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's another one. There must be others. There can't just be two in the last four years, surely. But mm. it does feel like they've spent their time just like prettying up their PS4 games for PS5. A lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Because obviously, but- yeah, the, their big games have been like sequels like Ratchet and Clank and Spider Man and. Forbidden West and Red God or Ragnarok and stuff. I genuinely can't think of any mm-hmm. other new IPs that have come along. But I think Returnal came out and did not do very well, which is disappointing. Obviously, it's a good game. I bought it on PC. It's good. It's yeah, good. yeah, it looks really good, good, man. Yeah, roguelike game um, with good cin- cinematics. But um, let's talk about Xbox then. I know we like it's been some doom and gloom, but there has been some some uh, bright spots. Obviously, acquiring more studios. Some say that's a bad thing. 
even though they they were the same people that said the xbox has nothing they sort of wanted i think their thinking was they should have they should open new studios not buy existing studios i think it was sense. just I, I think a lot of it was just it didn't they, the circumstances no. don't matter they just it's, mm. it's just console warrior bashing mm -hmm. it's like have, oh get more studios no not like that Mm -hmm. do it like i want you to do it so that you'll then have no games for 10 years where you get these studi studios up and running a lot of it's mm -hmm. just console or nonsense but they were in the pits around sort of 2017 when they'd like closed they closed lionhead and people were worried about uh rare at the time and they'd let other studios go like twisted pixel and um closed down other smaller teams they had cancelled things like Scalebound and obviously fable legends when they killed Lionhead, so they were in a terrible place around 2017. But the rebuild started last gen. It was like 2018 when they announced E3 2018 when they bought like Playground Games and um, Ninja Theory. Uh, what's the state of decay dev? Undead Labs. Dead Labs, yeah. Compulsion. And there was one more. Oh, they opened a new studio. Was it World's Edge? Maybe. For their sounds... strategy games. But yeah, they announced five new studios basically at E3 2018. And then everyone was suddenly like, oh, damn, this is looking really promising. And then 2019, um, was it XO19, I think? They announced mm -hmm. um, Obsidian and um, God, what's the other studio called? It's completely blanking on it, even though I like their games <laughs> in Exile. Yeah. Their, one of their games, T Torment Tides of Numenera, is the first thing I ever backed on Kickstarter. But yeah, they so they, in two years, in the space of like a year and a half, I think, they suddenly had like twice as many studios and everyone was like, next gen's going to be good. And then just before pre-orders opened for the next gen, I felt like they had a ton of momentum and then they announced Bethesda like right before pre-orders opened and it felt like, okay, this things might swing in there direction now and then a year later they start <laughs> trying to buy activision blizzard i remember at the time you and me were like this is too far <laughs> neither of us were neither of us were uh pro that acquisition no i wasn't um, no. yeah because we did our big talk when when they announced bethesda we were both like holy crap that's nuts and then when they announced activision we were both like oh this kind of sucks yeah because i, I, I feel know. like they could have i could have used that money for to buy a sort of a different small very studios i was like do you yeah. really need activision i know they got call of duty but you don't really need it you know what i mean yeah mm. but that's the thing i think we said at the time like surely they're they're going to keep call of duty multi-platform anyway because of how big it is so what are the what are xbox players really getting from this acquisition a game pass probably put that's it on game it, pass yeah. uh, get all the promotional stuff you see it advertised now but that's like the thing but if game you don't pass. care about call of duty anyway you don't really care about it going to game pass either no but it's it's a big mass it's probably the, it's, the it, biggest it's, it's gonna be a big deal yeah i'm sure yeah. i'm sure it'll be a big deal for a lot of people mm. but mm. but either way it, it momentum seemed to be swinging their way and people were like oh shit they might take this next gen and then they seem to have just completely ruined all of that and mm. They don't seem to know what the hell they're doing. And it's a really weird situation to be in now where they've got like 30 studios and games are coming out at a decent clip and games that have never come to the platform are coming to the platform. Like we have the entire Yakuza series. We're now getting Atlas games coming on yeah. day one and sometimes into Game Pass. Like yeah, I've got but... five Atlas games sitting on my shelf up there and another one, Metaphor, hasn't arrived yet because Royal Mail is shite. But... Whoever thought that was going to happen, mm -hmm. and um, you know, Final Fantasy's come back and finally got the pixel remasters. So we're in a really weird spot where, in some ways, things are better than they've ever been. Yet in other ways, like the console isn't selling, and they're starting to put their games on other platforms, which is going to basically, at the very best case scenario, be a very slow death for the platform. Mm -hmm. and the worst case scenario is just going to kill it overnight. Yeah, so I mean, I, it's just weird. Weird, weird, weird. It was um they they put Sea of Thieves available for PS5. Um, I can't see that because that's a live multiplayer so, games. I think is yeah. completely that makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. give those games the best chance to have a good player base. Yeah. But then the stuff like Pentiment and 
hi fi rush. Yeah. Um, grounded, kind of an experimental game. I guess I can see either way, but like single player stuff. And then they announced bloody Indiana Jones, and it's just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. That was the big reveal on PlayStation. I was like, oh my God. That was, that was their, that was their one oh, final thing. At games oh, fucking hell. <laughs> and one <laughs> final big thing. We're going to make ourselves the laughing stock of Gamescom. Please watch. It was. I mean, people were just laughing at him. I was laughing at him. I was like, you fucking idiots. So the, <laughs> whoever thought that was a good idea needs uh, serious talking to, because that was just so dumb. So dumb. Yeah. Uh, we've gone over this before, but if they can't sell consoles with games that are exclusive, how do they think they're going to sell consoles if, when the games are timed exclusive? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Indiana Jones is probably going to be exclusive for three months. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to go. Nobody's going to be like, "Oh, I must play Indiana Jones now. I can't wait three months and rush out and buy it." Like, I'm a prime mm -hmm. example of that. I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. The biggest thing for me is a new mainline Final Fantasy. And when they announced it for PS5, I was exclusive. I was pissed off, but I was like, well, I'll wait. Supposedly it's six months and then I can at least get it on PC. So I'll wait. Mm. And, you know, Indiana Jones for three months. Who's that going to convince to buy a console? No one. Mm. And it's, it okay. leads, it's leading to what we're already seeing. Like they can say it's case by case or whatever, or we're only doing this, these instances or whatever, but people are just going to assume everything's coming over now. And they're just going to wait and see if it does. Yeah, and if yes, it doesn't, I'll just go. Oh well, I won't play that game. Yeah, there are plenty of other uh, games out there. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, Xbox judging games case by case. That sounds like pretty much like we we're, we're going to put our games on the other platforms. Um, which is not a good idea when you want to sell your brand. You're making all the good moves, Xbox, and then you're sort of shooting yourself in the foot. And we keep banging yeah, on about it. Such a weird place to be. We keep banging on about it, but it feels like as Xbox. If you're a fan of Xbox, which we are, it's kind of like, what are we doing here? You know, you made good moves. You recovered from the disaster that was the Xbox One. Uh, even though I still like the console, I thought it was a good console. I really like the One X. Well, that they should have just One X was great. They should have just the design was so good. I, I loved the look of the design. It's like classic. It was a heavy console. Dense. That will weigh so much. You could have killed someone with that. How heavy it, how fucking dense and powerful it, it was. Um it was a bit of a weird one to have released that so close to the sort of um release of the next gen at the time. I think it was like a I year think. or so. No, it was three years before. Was it free? Oh, okay, yeah, then. it wasn't it too was, far. So the Xbox One, the PS4 came out twenty thirteen, and the PS4 mm. Pro came out in twenty sixteen. The One X twenty seventeen, and then the Series X, S and X, and the PS5 twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So we are now mm. ten years, well, eleven years at this point past the Xbox One, PS4 launch, and I think one mm. thing that's kind of made this gen feel a bit unremarkable in a way is the fact that we're still getting cross gen games. <laughs> like games yeah. are still coming out on the PS4 and I think less so on the Xbox One. A lot of games are starting mm. to skip that now, but we're still getting games on PS4. And then you've even got like Microsoft and Sony doing their first party stuff and still putting it on the old console. Like um mm. I don't know if God of War Ragnarok was because I didn't really pay attention to that because I didn't much like God of War twenty eighteen, but I know like um Horizon Forbidden West came out on PS4, because I remember there being a lot of negativity about it at the time. And I mean, if you can get it on there, then you might as well, because there's 120 people, 120 million people that mm -hmm. own those things. So it makes sense from a business point of view, but I think a lot of people want, they want a clean break when a new gen comes along. Mm -hmm. They want software to justify their new hardware, and I don't think we've really seen it at this point, which is also, I think, why there's a bit of negativity around the PS5 Pro, because people are still kind of sitting here going well, we're four years on in and we haven't really there hasn't been a great deal of like next gen exclusive stuff there's been like maybe a relative handful of games that aren't i mean even jedi survivor is, has just recently surfaced for last gen <laughs> and it's just like that that game barely runs on the new gen consoles or the current gen i suppose i should say now we're four years in and they're putting mm. they're backporting that to PS4, and I don't know if it's on Xbox One. I assume it is, but 
So yeah, I think that's kind of put a big dampener on this gen as well. The fact that cross gen has just continued for four years at this point, and then suddenly Sony come out and say, "Hey, do you want a more powerful one for seven hundred pounds without a disc drive or a stand?" Mm. And it's just I don't know. I think of, I think a lot of people are getting a bit disillusioned, and um, to which I say, get a PC. Can I? Yeah. Can I ask you like a personal quest question? Depends how personal I we're talking. Oh, right. How, how how big is your junk? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> That's definitely not a question for the podcast. No, no, I'm joking. Um, how how do you feel about this current gen? Do you, do you like it better than the last gen, or do you, are you sort of jaded, or have you has the games not excited you as much as previous generations? It's a bit of a weird one because specifically on xbox this is less of a thing with playstation um but like the dashboard is the same on the series x which i don't a lot of people didn't like that because they wanted everything new again and i to me that just doesn't really make sense why develop an entirely new dashboard if you've got one that works and does what you want it to do and people are familiar with um so it's kind of felt a bit like this gen has kind of felt like it's like when you have a PC and you you buy a new GPU and slot it in, you know, oh my games run better now. It's kind of a little bit been a little bit like that. It's felt like it's this felt like there's a lot of continuity from the last gen in that, you know, all my games from last gen came along with me anyway, because set on, as on PS5, there's full like full backwards compatibility with the previous gen. Uh and in some cases they run better. Um and the dashboard is the same pretty much. I mean, they've made some upgrades here and there. But the main things for me are the fact that how much faster the new systems are with running an SSD and having a better CPU that can sort of just handle what it needs to handle a lot better. Even things like downloading and um, like copying from storage and stuff like that is a lot faster because of the cpu but also obviously mainly because of the nvme um just turning a console on and then it's like ready to go versus like have you tried going back to an xbox one or one x recently they they feel so slow and sluggish by comparison it takes like 30 seconds to come on and then it's like another minute before you're in a game whereas the series x if you've got a game in um quick resume you turn the console on and within like five seconds you're back where you were in that game which is pretty cool so it's just felt like a big kind of quality of life upgrade and i kind of like the continuity it's had uh to be honest like all my games are still there i can go back and play those games if i want without having to in, like plug another system in um in terms of sort of games that push the hardware i think we have seen some um on Xbox, you've got Hellblade 2, which just looks ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's just, I think it's, I think that's why a lot of people feel a bit let down. But for me, it's kind of a plus, that kind of sense of continuity. Because I want, especially now we have, like when we got 360 back compat last gen and then some select Xbox, original Xbox back combat. It's kind of weird now to have like a Series X sitting there with obviously not complete um, backwards compatibility, but like four generations of games on there. I've got I've got original Xbox games, 360 games, Xbox One games, and Series X games installed on that console, and that feels pretty cool. So for me, I'm fairly happy about where the, the generation is. Um, my only thing is like again like it's just a really frustrating position to be in where you've seen Xbox kind of address all the things they needed to address, but then just shoot themselves in the foot with the multi-platform stuff. So mm. that's kind of, put a, that has put a massive downer on sort of how I perceive the Xbox brand. Cause it's been my main console platform for, for what, 22 years. I think the OG Xbox came out in 2002 in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's been my main platform for, more than two decades and now it seems like they're trying to kill it and it's just a really weird place to be in especially when you're seeing games come to the platform that have never been there before like stuff like persona and even like atelier is coming over now and it's just like we're getting all this stuff we'd never got before never even thought we'd get 
yeah, Xbox seem to be trying their hardest to kill it. And it's making me wonder why these third parties are actually bothering to put mm-hmm. the software on the platform at the moment, because surely they must be looking at Xbox and going, well, they're trying to kill their own platform. Why are we doing this? But mm-hmm. I'm glad they are, because I want those games. Mm-hmm. But it's just, yeah, that's that's the thing. If they weren't doing the multi-platform thing, I would feel a lot more positive about the brand. But in terms of like the user experience, I'm pretty happy at the moment, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. How about you? Uh, well, it's it's it's, an, it's a weird one. Like, obviously, the the Xbox One was a bit of a disaster. Uh, I still played a lot of games on it. Obviously, I played more on the, at one point on the PS4 just because they had the better games at that at that period. Um, I was excited when they acquired this lot of studios. Um, when they acquired a lot of publishers, uh, I thought, yeah, this is going in the right step. I mean, the dashboard on the Xbox, I still feel like it should. It, I kind of wish they sort of copy or sort of do their own sort of similar thing like what the PlayStation does. I, I'm not sure if the PS5 does it, where they have like music from the game playing in the background. Um, I kind of like that. I, I'm not too like big on like it being the dashboard being silent. Mm. You know, if I've got like, say, like I'm just got like I've been playing, I don't know, like uh, Halo or something. I just kind of like, would, I kind of would like that the 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 theme to be just to be playing in the background, like while whilst I'm scrolling through the 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 UI and going through everything. I just kind of don't. Yeah, the silence is a bit eerie, which is weird because Xbox did used to have like dome sounds and. Uh, weird alien like, sci-fi sounds yeah. on the OG Xbox. I think like that didn't the 360 have sounds as well? Been Not that I can remember. No. I also miss the the the, the avatars where you could do up your avatar on the 360. I thought that was great. I don't know why they just sort. Of, I don't know if it's still there. I don't think it is. Where you I can just dress up your character. Your, yeah, I don't know if that that app that you can like that lets mm. you edit your avatar is still yeah. your avatar is still there in its in your profile but they, they they've redesigned them they like they did this huge redesign thing a few years back maybe a bit longer mm. and people were like oh they're going to start pushing them and like using them in games and stuff and then they just did nothing with it. Mm. but in terms of in, ter- in terms of um in terms of games um i don't know like they they've like you said they've released some there's some good games out there but I, i'm I feel like this gen. I don't know if it's just me getting older. Like I don't play as much as I used to. Mm. Obviously, you get full time jobs and stuff, and life sort of gets in the way. Um, but I've not been playing as much. I think I reached some, my my playing peak was like the end of the three sixty PS a PS three sort of time. I did play a lot. Obviously, during lockdown, we had fuck all else to do, so I played mm. a lot of a lot of games. Um, but yeah, this just gen, I, I own so many, you know, you've got, That's we the own more games yeah. than I've ever yeah. owned, but have less time to Obviously, play. I, I buy games like physical games. I also got the Xbox game pass. So I got a, a wealth, I've got a wealth of, of, of options at my fingertips, but I don't play as much as I, I, I would like to, but yeah, like things just like life just gets in the way. You're the older you get, the, the, the less time you get to play. The only time I seem to play is when I'm making a video or streaming, but then even then it's like I make a video for like an hour. Then I stop playing that game. And even though I really enjoying it, it's just like, oh yeah. And I've got that more of that sort of content creator head where I'm just like, I've got like I've got make a, a this video. Is content. Like, yeah, I can't I can't spend like twenty hours playing one particular game. I've got to get out there and play another game and then make a video on that, make a quick look, make a exploring game pass video or something like that. Um yeah, but I have been playing Baldur's Gate three, really good. I I've enjoyed that. I, I sort of re, it sort of made me fall in love with like gaming again because I remember like obviously we grew up we're Bioware fans we grew up on that shit we love their game franchises. Obviously it's, they've had a bit of a wobbly um, past uh, few years, but I, I, I like I, I said I'm I'm not as enthusiastic about um, the Veil Guard, but I'm still going to play it because I love I love Bioware. So I'm still going to keep an open mind about that, but um, yeah, it's just like you know, games like Halo, Gears, 
I, I love I love all I love those games and it sort of brings me back to our younger days you know what I mean when we used to meet up and play the, the multiplayer and stuff like that and just mess around um but yeah like the, the, the I would still I'm still a gamer um gaming is more popular than ever you know development takes a lot longer more expensive but um I'm not sort of like you know, like where I, where I used to play Knights of the Old Republic from Bioware, you know, all the, the original Halos and stuff like that. All those games you used to get on the 360, man. Like, I used to I just, just loved all that. And I'm, I'm happy that they're bringing back like Perfect Dark and Fable because I, I really like, I know you didn't like Fable as much, but I, I'm really liking the way this new, the new re remake looks. It does look it look, good. It looks so good. And I just can't wait to play it. And it's so, out next year, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> multi platforms. <laughs> ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, it'll be it'll be six months timed exclusive on PS Five. Oh, that 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 uh, just come to Xbox afterwards. That'll just be the, that'll be the end then, because everyone's like really like looking forward to that game. Obviously, you got the haters saying, "Oh, the main character looks ugly." Oh, it's like, oh, fucking, come on, guys, just grow up. Like, not everything has to be look like a fucking fetish size version of an Asian girl with big <laughs> fucking movable tits. Come on, like. Jesus Christ! Like you're calling out the Stellar Blade community right now, Paul. Man, I worked on that game as well. I didn't get a free copy though, but I worked on the game. It's a good game, but for, for the love of fuck, people, can you stop fucking going on about the main character and just how sexy she is? I get it; she's a good-looking character, but oh god, like, please just stop going on about like just fest the fetishization of certain games. It's happened; like, it happens all the time. I get it, man. Like, I'll, I'm. I'll, I'll be a hypocrite to say, you know, obviously I've not like looked at a game character going, oh man, she's like she's really good looking. Like, as a young man, when I was growing up, I had big crushes on like game character, female game characters. Like I think a lot of people did. Um, but we, we, like, maybe it's cause I'm older. I'm just like, oh, come on guys, man. <laughs> if you, if you, if you just want to go outside and touch grass, touch grass, go meet a real person, real girl, whatever, man. Like, just like stop banging on about like ha game characters have to be ultra sexy um but this is certain type of games are different you know not all of them are going to be made by for a niche audience made for with a sexy like sort of asian um uh, um main protagonist it's just not how it is these days man it's just the more you know if we can go over that then then we'll be uh, Things, we can have both you know you can have whatever you know it's, that's the that's the good thing about gaming not everything has to be the same for shit man but um yeah this gen i, I i've enjoyed this gen you know you said there's been some really some really great games i couldn't really name which has been my favorite so far um i don't know if there's been like a standout game well, obviously boulder's gate mm. but i'm talking about like exclusive like for playstation or xbox obviously I haven't played uh, playstation games so i don't own a ps5 which is some people find really weird i'm just like no there's nothing really on there that i really want to get um i was thinking of buying one just for the last of us but i mean i don't mind waiting a year f for that to come out on pc which will probably run like shit because <laughs> they seem to they seem to purposely sabotage their own um the pc uh, their own pc uh, uh, well, they're definitely ports. sabotaging them now with these um, PSN login requirements. Oh yeah, yeah great, uh, which yeah. means that 170 regions around the world can't even buy them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's getting onto a whole other thing. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, similarly, there's nothing on PS5 I want. I'm, what I really want to play of Final Fantasy 7, 16. Bloody hell, I'm jumping ahead. Is the only thing that's been announced and come out on PS5 that I was like. That would have been a day one for me, but then knowing mm. if if they'd have come out and said this is permanently exclusive, I would have gone, "What well, shit? I've got to buy a PS5 now." Mm. But I mean, if it's timed exclusive, it's going to suck. But I'm going to wait. Like same with um, Silent Hill Two, but at least that's on PC at launch as well. So once I've actually got some free time, I will buy that and play through that. But yeah, I mean, if there's nothing on the platform you that you're interested in, then why would you buy it? Like it's same same deal if. If I did decide to buy one just for FF sixteen, that'd be like that would have been like six hundred quid to play one game. That's just mm. I can't justify that. Okay, 
Just a sec, I need to charge. Mm-hmm. I have a quick question for you before we wrap things up. Oh, shoot. Um, brief question. Don't need to go super in depth, but no, what I do never you think? Do. So we're probably at the, at the very much least we're halfway through this gen, but we've probably got another three years. Mm-hmm. I do wonder if now Sony releasing the pro a year later than they did last gen means they might try and ride it out to 2028. But there were obviously there were rumors of Xbox going in 2026, which I don't think anyone has really believed in, but 2027 is probably the likely year for the next gen launch. How do you see the rest of the gen going? What do you think we'll actually see from the beginning from, of the next gen? From Xbox or from PlayStation? Or? Well, from both, but I mean, Xbox is going to be the main one because neither of us play PlayStation anymore. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, how's it going to, how's it going to go? Well, obviously, obviously, um, the um, GTA is going to come out, and then that will be a cross gen. <laughs> is, that what you is. is that what you well, meant? If it is, that is that what you meant? Just like, what how, do you think is going to happen for the rest for like the last three, probably three years of the gen? What do you oh, see oh, the beginning of next yeah. gen looking like? Well, obviously, like PlayStation will release Last of Us Part Three. Like at the te- they seem to do that on the tail end of the console generation, and then and then re- remaster re- it, re- remaster <laughs> it, yeah. So that's when I know the end. That's going to be the end of the generations when I see a Last of Us Part Three come out. <laughs> Sorry, there, just closing my door. Um, I lost you, boy. Yeah, but I lost you. Well, I see Xbox making they, they they're spending a lot of time in japan obviously that's why we get more sort of japanese games coming out on the on the console like old sarah bond and phil is like sort of smoozing and shake making and shaking hands and hey guys you know, come and yeah. support our platform that we're trying to kill and so i'm yeah so i'm hoping that they make some deals and open it because they're only japanese studio they closed i'm hoping that they might open a japanese studio or even acquire some over there which will be really good because I see like people are at the very like, least fun some games from studios. Mm, yeah, I mean, like I see a lot on Twitter, a lot of people, a lot of Japanese customers buying Series S's. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to see it grow out there. But yeah, I see, I see, I see, I see Xbox having a good as long as they don't put it multi plat a good few <laughs> last few years. Like you got you got Perfect Dark. I've seen the, the, some of the gameplay for that. It looks fucking good, man. It's really good. I'm Fable, I think. Fable is going. I think it's going to be their big one. I feel like that's going to be that the, the the hit that they they need. So they they they've released good games, but obviously, like people want the big budget games. You know what I mean? The big sort of cinematic, great, great the games great, that Sony's known for, basically. Yeah, basically that. Um, which Xbox hasn't done recently because that's not that 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 that's not been their strategy. Which, but I think they sort of need to sort of match them. And the Fable, what I've seen, is looking good. Um, obviously, hopefully, it runs at sixty on the console. This thirty frames shit they they they're churning out is doesn't look good. Avowed is not running; is only running at thirty on on console. I reckon they'll get a patch after launch though, because Starfield came out at thirty, and now it's got fourteen sixty modes. Yeah, post okay. launch. Uh, so I think they'll probably yeah. patch it. But at the moment, yeah, mm-hmm. the fact that it's launching at thirty isn't is not good. It's not good. I mean, come on, man, you're you're on this some of the powerful console. You got to be able to run your games at least on six, at sixty, man. Come on, like this thirty frames bollocks is it's that's that's so Xbox three sixty days, mate. Come on. <laughs> Um, but I, I see them having a strong end to the end, end to the to to this gen. Um, I'm just hoping that they don't do anything stupid and start releasing more of their first party games onto onto uh, other platforms. Um, obviously, got the gears coming out as well. The pre prequel coming out. Yeah. Uh, that that's that's looking good. I still want to see what Kojima's cooking. I haven't heard much from 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 Al Kojima. Um but yeah, I just I'm just hoping for a good strong end and I'm hoping that I'm gonna enjoy the 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 new fable, which I think I will. It looks great. 
obviously you got Halo coming out on that. They re they re like Bungie's have they like sort of rebranded? Three four three. Yeah. No, re- no Halo yeah. Studios. So people and still don't like moving to Unreal still, Engine. People still don't like their their trilogy. I thought it was pretty good. You know, this I, is the I, thing I, that you can't. There's no you can't have a nuanced conversation about Halo on the internet because everyone will tell you that four to infinite infinite are shit and they're not there's never been a bad halo game there might be halo games you don't personally like but they're all good games i personally yeah. thought halo 4 was fun fucking one of my favorite i thought i really enjoyed that when i when i when i played it I like it really, quite a lot. yeah um the campaign I, reminds me reminds me of halo 2 in that it feels a bit more constrained than mm. the game that came before it like the levels mm. are a lot narrower in both mm-hmm. Halo 2 and Halo 4. But it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it looked amazing. That game looked mm-hmm. ridiculous at launch on the 360. Still looks good now in the MCC. And I think it's a good time. I don't think there's a bad Halo. I mean, it's not, I'm not even saying I don't think there's a bad, there quantifiably is not a bad mainline Halo game out there. I say mainline because those twin stick shooters they did on Windows Store were a bit shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. But all the mainline mm-hmm. games are at the very least good games. Mm-hmm. If you don't like them, that's that's different. But I want one thing. I would like how I, I would like a, a big announcement from Xbox. Um, maybe they have acquired Knights of the Old Republic, the rights to build make that. Um, because you remember, like that Sony was at one point funding the development, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be." Uh, the remake's going to be exclusive to PlayStation. I was like, oh, fuck me. When I heard that, I was just like, out of principle, I was just like, I'm not never getting a PlayStation 5. <laughs> I'll just play it on PC when it comes out. Um, but hopefully, like, there's still rumors of that being that remake happening. I think it should be on Xbox because the original game was on Xbox. And that I think launched it's been it, handed you know. to a different developer now. Mm-hmm. It was a spy, wasn't it, that were developing yeah. it? Yeah. And I think it's Saber Interactive are working on it now. But I don't know if that means anything for the deal that was struck. Hopefully, it does, because it's gonna. If that is a, an exclusive, that's really shit. Like mm-hmm. signing up one of the biggest entertainment properties in the world as an exclusive. I mean, they've already done that multiple times with Spider Man and Wolverine. Um, mm-hmm. and doing that now I, with Star Wars I, would be really shit. I don't. I don't get why they get to do that, but Xbox can't have. Indiana Jones as an exclusive. Well, they could. They apparently, um, I think it was Jez Corden said this. Mm-hmm. He said um, when they acquired Bethesda, they went to Disney and renegotiated the deal to make it exclusive, and now they've changed their minds. So who the f- knows what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's how I see it. Um, I think it'll be a strong end because they still got some big games to re- to be released obviously got a vow but you know the the big the big hitters are coming you know the fable and the perfect dark which we're all sort of keen because from what we've seen it's, it's exactly what everyone's been asking for big cinematics gameplay graphics it just looks like it's hit all those sort of requirements these days to apparently be a a, a a big game to be a good game yeah you gotta have all that you, you can't just have like, fun i mean i reckon if xbox released a game like astrobot people are still lord this looks like a fucking kids game <laughs> but because it's on the X, um, playstation everyone's like wow this game's fucking amazing it's so much fun yeah fun. i was like xbox have got like similar games to that sort of like kiddie sort of style that they've been that they've 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 produced and people bashed the shit out of, of those sort of types of games and now it's like, oh, Astro Bot. They're like, oh, wow, look at that. It's so fun. Those, he looks so cute. And I was like, okay. <laughs> fair enough. Well, it does look really yeah. good, to be fair. Oh, yeah, it I, does. I'm not saying it doesn't. It comes to PC yeah. at some point. But... I'm, not, I'm not saying it doesn't. But yeah, but I mean, I'm just, just saying... going back to fanboys, though, console warriors and everything, they, it's, it, they could have the same game on both platforms and they'd say it was shit if it was on one and amazing if it was on the other. There's no logic involved in it it's just tribal nonsense mm-hmm. yep. exactly but anyway that's you can do about it that's our thoughts on last gen and compared to the to current gen 
been good. I think Xbox has done better. Um, in some respects. Some respects. You know, worse than others. They've done worse. They we always say it, one step back, two steps, one step forward, two steps back. PlayStation, this gen seem to be it seems to be the era of just remaster remakes of their old IPs. <laughs> so they've not released like anything like even like they were they did remasters of Spider Man, didn't they, as well? Yeah. They did the uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think they're probably going to remaster fucking uh, Spider Man 2 as well <laughs> so, soon. So, um, yeah, so that, yeah, it's just the era of oh, they have basically you know, remastered everything at this point except Bloodborne. Yeah, the, it, so, um, that just the um, yeah, PlayStation's just sort of resting on their laurels and just remastering, remake it because they don't have much in the terms of development do they like in first party games they're just remastering all their other games like you said it just does to, seem like, like that from yeah. the outside looking in it just seems like they're kind of treading water a bit but yeah yeah but yeah there we are um anything else you need to say before we wrap this one up and get on with our lives uh go and check out my celebrating ease series that is oh yeah a few mm. episodes from the end now um yeah east 10 coming watch out it. in like two less than two weeks so hopefully we'll have the whole series done by then and then i've mm-hmm. got to try and find the time to make an ease 10 video sort of a round launch because that weekend i've got a lot going on <laughs> so i'm not sure when i'm going to be able to do it but fit mm. it in somewhere but go and check the series out it's not got a great mm. many views but you know it's a good series mm. well the, the games i mean the game series is good i'm not sure how good my video series is but go and give it a watch and um you, some of you might be happy to, or you don't really give a shit that me and Ross will be recording some videos in person together in the same room, like we did in the early days when it's it was just a, a bunch time. of lads, bunch of lads, few beers, few pizzas, few Chris, and just playing games together, like we how we started this channel. Well, and so, Nikki, Nikki was there; she's not a lad. Oh, you know, but lads, because uh, I mean, in the sort of general, not like defined by the gender thing but it, she's she's one of the lads um <laughs> she could certainly drink like one of us fucking more than what we can, can can hold our liquor better so um yeah um we'll be doing that um it'll be good it'll be like the old school days you know so i'm looking forward to that not just doing co-op it'll be actually us in the same room recording maybe on video for some of them we'll see how that goes uh yeah we'll, i'm looking forward to that man that's yeah, it should be good. Yeah, should be good fun, man. Bring it back to the Game of Chums old school. Do you know what I mean? Origins, just, Game of Chums yeah, origins. Just, just a blue, a blue snowball, some beers, <laughs> and a couple of like random games. We're just and gonna, no food. We're gonna a, we're gonna, yeah, we're just gonna have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's been the podcast. I am, um, you know, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and this. Um, podcast is available on all podcast streaming services apart from Apple Music because boo to Apple boo you boo you boo not you yeah you. Tim Apple there you go yeah, apples I, yeah we go well, anyway thanks thanks for watching and thanks for listening we'll see you guys on the next one bye yeah,